Good morning, YouTubers. GW here, also known as the Guido Whisperer. Hey, I uh, just came back from a post three day century ride, and I kind of wanted to give you uh, the rundown here and a few tips that uh, could possibly help you out on your first century ride. But before we get into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, hit the bell, and let me know how I'm doing. So, I uh, decided to take a uh, the first century ride first century ride uh, three days I came home it was uh, roughly about 730 in the evening and I didn't have much time to do anything as far as uh, getting a bike all washed up and ready to go for the following day so that's one thing that we'll talk about uh, and then I had immediately a 48 hour shift at the firehouse after that so we'll kind of go through everything that uh, uh, goes along with the, your first century ride. Uh, so, number one, number one, I can't stress this enough um, on the bike itself. The thing I found, obviously, you know, everybody talks about mechanicals. I, I did that. I even did a test ride before it happened. And um, so, all my mechanicals, mechanicals are good. These are just my tips that uh, could have made my ride a lot better. And that is to actually have a GPS dedicated solely for the ride. Uh, currently, right now, I'm using an iPhone 6 Plus. I think it's an iPhone 7. Uh, and, and the issue that I was having is I was trying to conserve batteries, have battery packs, and trying to do the whole ride for a certain amount of distance, not know exactly where I was at, and trying to follow different trails in order to make sure that uh, I was getting where I needed to be. Hell of a boo boo, maybe. I'm gonna check the GPS here. Holding off on uh, actually using the GPS till we get to a point where obviously I know where I'm going. So, and I turned around a few times and had to uh, find a better location or a better route. And I had to stop, turn the phone on, uh, track it that way. So if I can't stress something enough is have a dedicated uh, GPS whether it's a Garmin or a hammerhead or anything like that so you don't have to mess around and worry about uh, charging your cell phone or any of that stuff uh, like I said I had to stop look at the map get off if you had a dedicated GPS all that stuff goes by the wayside and boom you can go right in there and, uh, and just enjoy the ride and that's a, and that's a big thing with that uh, number two I would say have a family friend a friend a best friend anybody um, track you as you are going okay I do appreciate it my friend thank you bye buddy see ya a best friend anybody um, track you as you are going on your big adventure a century ride is a long uh, 100 miles and um, you know what my saving grace a good buddy of mine was following along for my first century ride and he was actually tracking it for me so he actually gave me a call and said hey uh, you're gonna get you're gonna miss this section because he's done it before you're gonna miss this section of uh, some great scenic routes and then uh, he actually turned me around and got me right back on to where I needed to be. So, you know, I wanna try to keep this short. I don't wanna make a long videos. I usually do long videos just because I wanna show you guys uh, my experience on the ride itself. But today I just kinda of wanted to touch base with those, uh, the, these five things that uh, really would have made my ride uh, a lot different. So, number three number three and this is a big one guys this is a big one for the love of god train for the ride um, as i talked in my one video already i just went out and winged it and and i wouldn't say winged it because i was training for about 30 to 40 miles and i had no issues with that but 20 and 30 miles are a lot different than 100 miles and if i can't stress enough at least do 80 miles before you go out for your first century ride. 
I can't stress that enough. Uh, whether it's flat or hilly or whatever, just make sure that you take the opportunity to at least ride 80 miles before you try your first century ride. I can't stress that enough. Uh, it probably should be at the top of my list, but really, um, I can gut things out quite a bit. So uh, I don't think that that's the number one top priority of mine. My number one was definitely the GPS, but if I would say three, three would definitely be train, train, train for your ride. Uh, I can't stress that enough when it comes to it. So just to recap real quick, GPS, we're talking about having somebody tracking you and training for the ride, okay? So number four, um, number four, I would have to say that take cash. Number, number four would be take cash. So I went through a cool little, a little part of the north, uh, or sorry, the Schuylkill uh, River Trail, and it had a little fall festival. Well, Mother Nature showing me who's in charge, and it's raining, but luckily, found ourselves a nice little fall festival. And looks like there's an old cover bridge up there. Well, I might uh, venture around here, take a peek, see what's going on. Pretty cool. Um, I could have used a little bit of cash. I was actually in and weaving around. I, was, I stopped there for a rain delay and uh, I could have got some pizza. Luckily, there was a, a friendly cyclist, whoever you are out there. I can't remember your name. I think it was uh, John uh, Berks. Berkshire, I believe it was, but I can't, I can't remember that. I thank you, thank you, thank you for the slice of pizza. It definitely helped out tremendous. I was about at mile 60, and uh, you know, mile 60 is definitely a uh, a milestone in itself. A slice of pizza and a coffee was a great touch by that good friend, friend cyclist. Uh, who just happened to be on the trail with me. So we stopped there at the Fall Festival. I was walking around, I thought I could use my Visa check card, and lo and behold, nobody took cash, or nobody took the Visa check card, only cash. So fourth thing, I would definitely say, bring cash with you uh, for the little incidentals where you can't stop at a convenience store or anything like that. So fifth, uh, fifth, item on the list that I would have to say. Number five, this kind of goes back in tandem with training, but you have to psychologically prepare yourself for this 100 miles. And I was, I, I probably spent four or five days just really getting in the zone and thinking about what I was about to accomplish uh, with this. And what I'm saying is riding 20 miles is a heck of a lot different than riding 100 miles by yourself. Well, here we are. Rain delay, I'm pissed off. I can't believe it's gonna rain for the next couple hours. I don't know what the hell to do if I should call it. I'll tell you what, throw the towel in or what, but absolutely miserable demoralizing actually for your first century ride pretty cool though definitely a pretty cool little area people are super friendly I guess where are we right now we should probably look at that we are Canal Trail. Closest town. Almost at Penn State Burks. <laughs> well, here's to about another 35 more miles. In the rain. I don't think it would be as bad as if we did that with a group. Uh, 
uh, I think there would be a lot of conversation spurring. I think there would be a lot of, of, of fun and games and that kind of stuff. And I think that, uh, you know, riding by yourself really is a psychological thing. Like, you have a lot of time in that saddle to just chip away at whatever you're thinking about. And the re most random things start popping in your head. You know, you start singing songs to yourself. You really start talking to yourself. I ended up talking to the camera quite a bit uh, on my last ride. But I think that, that, you know, riding 20 miles by yourself is completely different than riding 100 miles. So I, I think that that's a big, a big thing that people miss, that you need to psychologically get ready for that 100 miles in a saddle by yourself and things to think about and how you're, how you're producing power that you're putting out. And, you know, you definitely go through some super highs and some super lows in 100 miles by yourself. And I can vouch for that. And a friend of mine was taking a look at that video that I just posted, um, you know, four or five days ago or three days ago, whenever it was. But he could tell, like, my, you know, basic demoralization and then highs and lows within the video to the point that I have to say, you know, I started, my, well, my mind started playing tricks on me when it came to knowing the distances that I was from home. At one point, you'll see in a video, I say, oh, I'm 25 miles from home and then realize that I'm 35 miles from home. But those things happen because uh, your mind is trying to play tricks on you and trying to trying to do everything that it can possibly do to, um, you know, try to get you to get to 100 miles. So, you know, I, I have to say that, you know, uh, the, 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 that alone, um, you have to think about it. The fifth thing is come to the realization that riding 20 miles by yourself is 110% different than riding it uh, with a group, especially 100 miles. And if I would tell you to do anything, if you're going to go out on your first century ride, take a group uh, and make sure that uh, you know you have somebody to talk to. So uh, a few final thoughts. Uh, I wasn't able, I'm getting ready to wash the bike here because I, like I said, I got off the, the a 48 hour shift so I got to really detail the bike up because I didn't have time at 7.30 at night and uh, the kids were excited to see me. But anyways, as, as a final thought is truly enjoy uh, that ride. Uh, a century ride is a great accomplishment if you're looking to do that and take the opportunity regardless of your lowest lows or your highest highs is really reflect back and take a, a lot of pictures a lot of video of what you're about to do uh, i truly believe that uh, you know it's a great accomplishment 100 miles on a bike in the saddle with just you and a machine or you and a group of friends is a great accomplishment and i can't tell you enough to basically reflect back on that experience alone and make sure that you can digest it well and not have to rush off and do the next thing. Um, 100 miles, century ride, whatever you want to call it, I believe it's a great accomplishment. Kudos to anybody out there who's doing it. Uh, and again, keep cycling my friends and I'll see you on the trails or see you on the road. Until next time, keep riding.